welcome to Tea Talks. Sammy's here today. Long time no see. Yeah, we got Sammy. Um, how are you going, love? Great. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a bit to get through this week. We've had a bit of, even though we haven't really left the house, things no. have happened, hey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've got a few things to get through. So, first, where should we start? Well, let's start with your beautiful face that you've got oh, at the moment. Well, we're doing it early this week because we were on the balcony and Sammy um, decided I should wear pink today, first of all. So, we got in my pretty pink dress. It fits a lot better. Well, it's a bit loose because I hit a, another significant number on the scales. I'm under 70 kilos, so I'm pretty excited about that. I know I shouldn't be, but... I would be. And don't people, lie and say you wouldn't be either. My people know what that is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I even told Bron to tell Phil, our PT, that I'm down to 69 kilos. <laughs> um, but anyway, the dress is a bit loose and it feels quite comfortable on me. So, yeah. Um, so I think I've lost about 11 kilos in the last few months. So... Yeah, but anyway, more of that later on. Um, well, actually, that might that's a good segue into the call that I got from the hospital. Yeah. Um, so the respiratory fellow um, who gives me the machine that I use for breathing rang yesterday just to check and see how things were going um, and then said that the doctor there had said that he would be happy to see me earlier if I needed, he had an appointment for me in November, but if he wanted to see me, he was prepared to double book. Um, and I he said, so would you like to see him? And I was like, I don't know, do, do I need to see him or what's the go? Anyway, um, he said, oh, he's just concerned about your malnutrition. And like, I still don't think I'm malnourished at 69.4 kilos. And you're absolutely not malnourished. You're eating. And I'm not hungry. Yeah. I think malnourished, I would be hungry, wouldn't I? I don't know. But, like, even mm. if you weren't, like, you are still eating. I mm. just think everyone is ridiculous. Anyway, so I just kind of said, he said he was just concerned about the malnutrition. Then he went on to tell me how they had a guy who had MND, who was in there a few weeks ago, who was malnourished and they had to put a nasal gastric tube down. Sorry. Here we go. It wouldn't be a tea talk to me. Without the yawn. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, anyway, they had to put a nasal gastric tube down to give him some food. I just couldn't think of anything worse. Because like literally over mum's dead body. Is yeah, that, that is not happening because... If I'm not hungry, why would I want to feel full and bloated from someone shoving a horrible formula down my stomach, down my nose, to my stomach? I'm not doing it. Mm. Anyway, I just said to him, I'm not eating because I'm dying. I'm not dying because I'm not eating. So he said, all right, well, I'll You're just... not dying because you're not eating. You're not eating because you're dying. Yeah, something like that. Did I get it the wrong way around? I think so. Oh. Anyway, I've still got my, I've still got some going on up here. I've still got my. She's working my brains. fine. Yeah, she's working fine. <laughs> anyway, um, he said, oh, well, I'll talk to Dr. Tang and if he's got a problem with it, I'll call you back. So I haven't heard from him. But what's his problem going to be anyway? Sorry. I'm sorry. Um. So anyway, we just left it at that, but. I am not concerned about losing weight because I'm eating when I'm hungry. I had carrot cake and latte for breakfast this morning, thanks to Bron. It was beautiful. What's there to complain about? Exactly. Nothing at all. So anyway, um, then what happened? I spoke to the hospice yeah. as well. I think there'd been a bit of miscommunication in the calls, but they've kind of left it. Um, they're going to give me a call in a couple of weeks, but they've said that they've just left me on their wait list and it's sort of up to me to escalate things if I feel like I need it. So, which is good because I'm having some nice days, a lot of nice days on the balcony Yeah. here. And I think I would miss that if I was in hospice. So while I can still do that, I'm happy to keep plugging along. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
But we do have some issues that might stop that happening because we've got a bit of a problem with the feet. Yeah, <laughs> you've got pretty oh, tucked feet. feet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're um, my feet, my Achilles are really sore, particularly on my left hand side. And my physio said like she can feel it's really tight. And I think the muscle is gone there, so I can't straighten. Like I give my hand to say I can't straighten. Look at that. Can't straighten my foot out flat. So it's really hard to walk. Um, it is. It's it's hard to watch you walk. Honestly, yeah. Because you're um, kind of like dragging one foot along. Yeah. And, and because normally your instinct would be to walk on your tippy toe. On that foot mm. which is what I need to do to not stretch my foot out but I don't have the muscles to do that so I can't walk on my tippy toe so it's very painful when I first wake up in the morning and then once I get that first walk out of the way it becomes a little bit easier just ignoring you I'm um, sorry it becomes a little bit easier but still reasonably painful but not as painful but she did, the physio did Still say slow. to me, yeah, slow and painful. And probably most people wouldn't walk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple of mornings ago, I tried to walk and I couldn't. And I said to Sammy, go and get my wheelchair. And then she looked so sad going to get my wheelchair. She got out here and I yelled out, don't worry, I can do it. <sighs> so I managed it on the walker. But this morning, because we had Bron here um, visiting and I hadn't, done my stretches yet to warm my feet up we just got the wheelchair and w wheeled out in it but then you did stretches later on and it was better yeah yeah, yeah. i think it just gets sad every time i feel like there's like a next step or like, yeah yeah and that's just, like i was saying to the physio my problem with not doing that first walk of the day is then do i not do the next walk of the day and then do i not walk for a day then that makes it stiffer and tighter and then do I just never walk again? So I'm trying to maintain it, but also in maintaining it, I could pop that Achilles, which then she said I would be in plaster and I wouldn't be able to do anything. So, and then in my other leg, the Achilles is starting to hurt as well. So anyway, <laughs> it's all downhill from here. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not good in the feet area, but we're still managing at the moment. But that is going to be an issue if I can't walk in terms of hospice. Yeah. Because it's just a bit hard to manage here without walking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, although we've managed everything that's been thrown at us so far, I think that We is. are quite inventive with yeah. things. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Things have changed as in my, my chair on the balcony, I haven't been able to get out of, but Sammy's just problem solved that. and made it a bit higher with a cushion and stuff and so that's meant I could get out of it but I can definitely notice changes in my my leg muscles in that it's hard to get up out of chairs and like my toilet seats had to go up higher so that just means the range of movement is less I guess yeah but you know is what it is uh -huh. and then what else have we got to talk about your emergency contact Oh, yeah. Sad. Oh, yeah. No, yesterday, so, um, I don't know. I had to do something, and um, they asked me. We had a bit of a breakdown yesterday, Mum and I. Yeah. Um, but, so, yesterday, I was on the phone with someone. They asked me, um, essentially, because they need to contact me once a year. They were like, oh, I'm just checking. Um, we've got your emergency contact for someone who'll know where you are. This time next year as... This sounds really sinister. Can you just say you do a survey for the education department? Yeah. <laughs> you're probably thinking you're bloody having to check in for your, um, what do you yeah. call it, parole or something. Yeah, no, no. It's yeah. like literally just a survey thing that I do. It's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they were like, so we've got someone, if we can't get in contact with you, we've got someone who... Will know where you who, are. Who will know where you are. Um, mm. We've got two reasons is that... Is that still accurate? And I was like, oh, uh, this time next year, she might not be answering the phone. Mm -hmm. um, so I had to change that. She was a bit awkward. And then I kind of thought like, 
who's my who's my emergency contact going to be? Because mm. it's not going to be me. It's my mum. You know, yeah. like I came out and I wasn't even like sad or I was just like, oh, that's so weird. But then I started talking about it with her and I just went. And then I just went. And then for the rest of the night, we were just howling. Couldn't stop the tears. We were actually howling, weren't we? Yeah. It was. Yeah, well, it was probably cathartic, but yeah. was really sad. Just made me think how fucked it is and how not fair it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so that it's was... Not fair. That was... Um, pretty awful. Pretty awful. Um, don't of, ask me who my emergency contact's going to be. Yeah, one of the many things that happen. You just don't think about it. Yeah. Yeah, like you, you can think ahead and think of some of the things that will happen, but that's just one of the many that will just pop up day to day. Yeah, so that was a bit sad. It made us quite sad last night. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, anything else that we need to talk about? We've been watching Desperate Housewives oh. and Mum's been loving it. I've been trying to get her to watch it for years. I've been loving Desperate Housewives. But now... Like, what else are you going to do? I'm yeah. putting Desperate Housewives on and you're going to watch it and you're going to yeah, like it. Yeah, I have no say in it. Yeah. But it reminds me of me and my girlfriends. Like, just the camaraderie between them and that real deep friendship got your back no matter what. Like, I love that. Yeah. Except for they've all got guns. Yeah. It's, yeah. We're it's, not really that gung-ho here. It's but a crazy street wisteria. Lane. Yeah. Yeah. But I just, we love the friendships between yeah. the women. And, Absolutely. Yeah. So that's been great. We've watched a lot of that. Yeah, we're flying through it. We spent one day last Saturday, I think, because it was a rainy day, and we just watched it all day. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Such a good show. Yeah. I, not The Real Housewives, Desperate Housewives. Yeah. Uh, it is phenomenal. Yeah. I've watched it like 20 times. It's my so favourite show. It. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I was trying to work out why I didn't watch it when it was first out, but I think... I was way too tired because I would have had young children. Mm. Um, Sammy watched it then. She used to be in bed early I so you could watch way it. way too young to be and, watching Desperate and Housewives. also made Max watch it. Yeah. Because Max was telling me the other day, oh, Sam made me watch it when I was like, I don't know, seven. No, we would have been like... would have been? I don't 11, know. 10 or something. Oh, we would have been maybe like eight, nine. Yeah, too young. Too young to be watching Desperate Housewives. But you know what? I but had... those women shaped me. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and I had five kids in six years. And so long as they were in the bedroom, I didn't give a shit. <laughs> like, they all had TVs in their room and I was all for it because so long as they went to bed at 8.30, I didn't care. <laughs> and I would have been in bed at 8.30 asleep as well. So yeah. they were watching Desperate Housewives and I was sleeping. But anyway, yeah. So we're loving Desperate Housewives. So good. Um, anything else to report? Um, that might be it for this week. It. Yeah, I think we've covered it all. Um, but it's been a pretty good week, really. Overall? Yeah. I've rated it. Ups and downs. A few things have happened, but yeah, it's it's okay. Yeah. You missed the tears. We had them yesterday, so... So yeah. they've got plenty. Just look at the last like four videos you've uploaded. Yeah, <laughs> I know I've uploaded a lot. Um, my TikTok's going great though. By the way, I'm nearly ninety thousand followers. Very close to ninety thousand followers. So, this time next week. Yeah, going really well. We're aiming for the hundred thousand. Yeah. So, yeah, but that's also a lot of fun and fills in time in my day as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, all right. Well, we say goodbye for now. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week.